let's talk about something funny. And as we know, the greatest comedian of all, of all time, our dearly beloved Prophet Muhammad, has lots of funny sayings and his followers didn't do any justice because they were blind followers and they followed him to whatever end. Um, and uh, they are more responsible in making the fool out of their prophet than anyone else, than any Jew or any Christian or any anti-Islamic person could do. So, you know, like if, if someone wants to, like, once I understand that, you know, I have this charisma and I can fool people into believing in whatever I want. For example, um, and, and that's what Muhammad realized. For example, Muhammad once needed a coat of armor and he, when, when this guy off, he, uh, Auf, I think is, is pronounced, he came up to him just in the battle of Ohad, the second battle, the famous Ghazwa. He came to Muhammad and he said, what does please Allah the most? And he said, you'd think that oh, one who is pious, no, one who prays five times a day, no, that's not what he said. Something totally random. He looks at his shining armor and he says, the one who jumps in the battlefield without armor, that's what pleases Allah the most. <laughs> that's literally what Muhammad said. The guy took, his, took off his armor, jumped in the battle, and he was destroyed. And, and he, got, he was slain. This is written in Ibn Ishaq. Reference will be given in the description. Um, and Muhammad took his armor and he fought with two armors. Now that's been confirmed in multiple sources. Muhammad himself was wearing two armors while he's telling people that Allah loves them the most who jump in the battlefield without two armors. So, so you know, that's, a, that's his power of charisma and, and the stupidity of other people. I'd be like, screw you. Okay, Muhammad, give me your armor. I'll put it on. You jump in. <laughs> no. <laughs> but these guys were blind followers and they, they just laid down their lives like idiots. So that's the power Muhammad had. And then people would say, but, but you would wonder, what is that obsession with Allah? Why do you want to please Allah the most? So it's like somebody comes up to me, Harris, uh, you know, I would jump. I, I, would, I would go and fight with anyone you want. What will I get in, get in return? So I'll have to promise them something. Oh, I'll give you so and so much money. Um, oh, no, actually, bad, better analogy is this is what happens in countries like Pakistan and these third world countries where, uh, where these people sell everything. They steal their mother's uh, jewelry. They, 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 they steal their father's motorbike and they sell it. And then they all the money that they get, they go and give it to travel agents. And they say... Now you can go to America and the travel agent sell, sells them these dreams that in America, oh, the money is money literally rains. It grows on trees. You can do anything you want. And then the guy says, uh, how are the white women? Are they good? Yes, yes. They've got strip bars. They've got brothels. You can do anything, bro. But you got to give me $2,000 so I can take you, take you to America. And then they say, okay. <laughs> he robs his mom, robs his dad. Here's the money. Um, obviously, not everyone. So not everyone is sold on that. I'm just saying that you, obviously you sold a dream, but that dream, your priorities could could be different. Maybe you just want to, you know, earn a decent living for your family. That's very well possible as well. But um, but you sell these false dreams. So that's what Prophet Muhammad did. So. Obviously, there was no America, no, no promise of United States where money grows on trees and, you know, you can have these beautiful women because probably Muhammad didn't even know. Um, but there was no United States anyway. Um, but what did what did Muhammad sell? <laughs> Look at this one. Now, this is a book called The Maidens of Jannat, meaning paradise, compiled by Mufti Zubair Bayan. Now, read this. He says, now he's talking about men in heaven and women he he will see the marrow of her leg just as a person can see the thread inside a ruby oh how sexy his inside will be a reflection of her and her inside will be a reflection of him jeez two bodies becoming one <laughs> he will be in in this condition he will not become bored of her yeah you know all you men 
you like after once you're like, oh, sorry, honey, let me go to sleep. I got to go to work tomorrow. No, not in heaven. In heaven, you'd be like, I'm not getting bored of this. <laughs> so anyway, so every time he comes to her and no, this is C-O-M-E-S comes yet, not C-U-M yet. Okay, it'll get there, it'll get there. <laughs> he will find her to be a virgin. You know, it says like her hymen will regrow. You know, like you've done it. You've gone away and then you come back, you're a virgin again. So that tells you the obsession people had with, with virginity. Or maybe Muhammad had, because it looks like other Arabs didn't really care about virgin women as much as Muhammad did. But anyway, his sexual organ, meaning his Johnson, <laughs> will not tire. And her sexual organ will also not experience any difficulty. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's getting worse, but I, it's going to get better, actually. Uh, for all you, all you naughty boys, it's going to get better for you. While he is in this condition, someone will announce. I wonder who that is. Is that Muhammad or is that Allah? We have known that you will not get bored and you will not make her bored. Both the men, both the man and a woman, and woman will not experience ejaculation of sperm. I don't know if women actually have ejaculation but so some I guess okay, so maybe some do but um you know this is like the ultimate extender of uh, your duration you know those uh, all, all you boys who have a you know like a two minute problem <laughs> you wouldn't have that problem how long can you last in heaven well it'll come to that i told you i promise you it's gonna get better both the man and woman will not experience ejaculation of sperm. You will have other wives beside her. There you go. <laughs> nah, man. I may not get bored of her, but I want variety. I want more. That one's not enough. Even though I can see the marrow through her, <laughs> through her neck. Not enough. I want more. He will go to the other wives one by one. Whenever he will go to a wife, she will say, to sway, she will say to him, I swear by Allah, honey, there is nothing in Jannah more beloved to me than your, <laughs> than you. <laughs> but we know what she meant. Um, according to Muhammad, obviously, no woman would say that. But anyway. Haytham Al-Tai and Salim bin Amir relate that Rasulullah, meaning Prophet of Allah, was asked regarding sexual intercourse in Jannah. And why wouldn't you? You know, you have this spokesperson of the creator of the universe. And instead of asking, you know, um, how do we overcome viral infections? Why do people die? You know, um, how do we do a tra heart transplant? Or, you know, what is, what is cancer? Instead of that, prophet, please tell us. How is it going to be? How are we going to have ding dong in paradise? And Prophet Muhammad obliged because he knew this is very important. Nobody gets between a man and his sexual urges. Prophet said, it will be with a powerful desire and a penis which does not tire. Mouth watering, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Definitely, a person will have sex with a woman for 40 years. Two minutes, 40 years. Hang on, how many, how many minutes is that? Where's my, where's my phone? Oh, where's my calculator? <laughs> 40 years. You, that is one. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> During this time, he will not move away, nor will he tire. He will have sexual intercourse as much as his soul will desire. And his eyes will find pleasure in it. 40 years. That is a one long bang. You know, like, I'm 37 years old and I've been banging for the last 37 years. And i still got three more years. My legs are not tiring. <laughs> My hands are not tiring. <laughs> My, my biceps will be like this big, <laughs> depending on the, you know. <laughs> okay, so this is not a weak hadith, by the way. Have a look. This is written in Al-Tabaran's Al-Mujam Al-Kabir. And this has been graded Sahih by our favorite Sheikh Al-Albani. Favorite Albani, um, favorite, one of the favorite uh, hadithians. 
uh, of uh, Muhammad Hijab and many Salafis. And Muhammad Hijab would actually, he, he, he likes Albani. Um, he respects Albani. So, yes, here's what it says. Yes, with a penis that does not tire and desires that do not seize. Orgasms after orgasms after orgasms. Forget about any wild porno you've ever watched. There's, what, what's the Bible verse? There's whose ejaculations are like that of... No, no, whose penises are like that of donkeys and their ejaculations are like horses. <laughs> Forget that. Guys, that's why you got to come to Islamic paradise. You are going to have a time of your life. Or not. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal. 